I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to another fantastic, classic Western film brought to you here free by Westerns on the Web. Thanks for joining us. You know, the, the Western has been a part of the world's culture ever since the great train robbery from 1903 and all the way through the singing cowboys like Roy Rogers and Gene Autry and, and John Wayne kept the Western alive and continues to do so. Well, here's another classic Western film. Thank you for joining us. Kick your boots up, sit back, relax, enjoy it. And we'll see you after the show. Mr. You're keeping me waiting. What's your brand, stranger? Mr. I'm asking for a special brand today. That's Bran Bolton, the proprietor. Well, uh, he, he's out of town. Uh, I know, going to Butte. Yeah, yeah. And it's 50 miles a hard trail between here and the railroad, and... Uh, yes, I know that, too. Well, anything that Bran Bolton can do for you, I can, too. You're talking to Bran Bolton's partner, stranger. Hawkins is the name, otherwise known as Coyne. I'm glad to meet you. Yeah. Uh, your partner goes to Butte frequent. Yes. Does he ride saddle or stage from the railroad? Why, he prefers his horse to the stage. It's uh, more private-like. Mm. Well, that'll give me time to catch up on my drinking. He'll be here late this afternoon. Yeah, well, anybody's a friend of Brand's a friend of mine. The best is on the house. That's my liking, that bourbon. Good morning, mister. Good morning to you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> uh, uh, well, what can I do for you? <laughs> I made a date for today with Bran Bolton. Why, he's out of town. Yes, I know. He's been to Butte. What? 
you, you know it, too? Uh, well, according to our mutual friend over there, he'll be in late this afternoon. So it's you. Seven notches, eh? There were only six when our trails crossed last. There's room for just one more. Then I'm going to have to break in a new gun. The one shot fired recently. That last shot fills out your dead man's tally. I'll bet it was fired at somebody, probably in the back. It, uh, that shot was only funnin'. It had to do with the uh, naming of his poison. From a holster with a hole in the bottom to beat any square shooter's draw, huh? talk mighty big against an empty holster, mister. I suppose now you'll talk even bigger against my empty gun. I did my talking and acting two years ago when we put you away in the Pecos County Jail. And I did my talking when I swore that when my time was up, no county would be big enough to hold us both. My throat kind of dry, but I reckon I can postpone my drinking until you get a reload. But I'm a betting that you won't show. I'm going to take that bet. I'll call your hand at 4 o'clock. If you do show up at 4 o'clock, I'm making another bet that you won't show alone. According to your second bet, I can show up anyhow I please. Gents, I'm figuring that you all heard this date. Made on the level according to rules. I expect things to stay that way when I get back at 4 o'clock. I wish I had reasons to throw an honest gun on you between now and 4 o'clock. But a shooting date's a shooting date. Along this whole frontier. And that's all there is to it. When you've finished your heavy drinking, I'd like to have some straight talk with you down in my office. That's another date, Sheriff. Stranger, my name's Stoner. My friends call me Stack. Howdy. Stack here is a real confidential sidekick of Brand Bolton's, ain't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, stranger, I was just wondering where you aimed all that lead you threw from that sidewinder six-shooter. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the gent that came in and turned around and went right out again made it convenient for me to aim that lead at that uh, girl's picture there. Well, I've got to see this. Come on, fellas. Oh, yeah. I'm shooting. <clears throat> gents, may I inquire what your sudden interest is in that poster? Our sudden interest is in a gent who ain't advertised on that there bill. A gent who was plenty fast in making a shooting date. Why did all that there decorating from inside the barn? Well, I swan. And who might I ask is this sure shooting gent? Don't know. Stranger to us. Also the guy that he made the shooting date with. Hey, stranger. I thought I'd seen shooting before, but up to now, I ain't seen nothing yet. Well, the drinks are on the house, Ben. No, sir, I say the drinks are on the town. Right. Well, Mister, uh, as mayor of Sundance, I know we'd all profit by learning what drink steadies your trigger finger. Now, you just name it, and we'll all have the same. Yeah. Right. Oh, why, that's fine. Well, milk's my drink. Nice, fresh milk in a tall glass with a couple of spoons full of sugar added into it. Milk, I'm in the wrong place, sir. Let me out of here, let me out of the wrong place. Let me get out of here, let me out. Well, I said we'd all have the same, and we will. So help me, or my name ain't Smith. Noah Smith, spelled with a Y. Milk? Yes, fresh milk. Yeah, that's what I thought you said, milk. I love the wide open spaces the prairie flowers I smell. Now, what rhymes with I smell? I smell, I smell, I smell. You're telling me. <laughs> Come on.
Unless my good eyes deceive me, that was the mesquite kid. Up to no good in a hurry. Well, my good intellect suggests that he may have something to do with Crash Corrigan's contrary notion to come to Sundance. Well, from the hurry the kid's in, your intellect seems to be better than usual. Go on, Jack. You're heading in the wrong direction, kid. I thought I told you to meet me in Sundance today. I've been there, Bolton. And I'll be there again at 4 o'clock with a good gunman to help me shut up a Gabby Gent for good. Who is this Gabby Gent? Well, up to 4 o'clock, he'll answer to the name of Corrigan. Crash Corrigan. After that, he won't be hearing. Good luck, kid. Just be cow kicked if there ain't too many comings and goings here. <laughs> Why don't you tie a string around that thing? <laughs> Hello, yeah. Hello, Crash. Glad to see you. Uh, and am I glad to see you, sir. <laughs> How dashed you celebrate your coming to our town by making a shooting date with a gunman and a stranger to boot? Ted Tolliver, how dast you insinuate that I'm celebrating and I don't know what I'm talking about. Besides, he's no stranger to me. That was the Mesquite Kid. No. Yeah. And you know what happened down on the Pecos. Yeah, I've heard about that. You wouldn't be any good to me pushing up Sage and Boot Hill Cemetery. Say, it ain't no hop, skip, and a jump in the Pecos here. What brought the mesquite kid here? I reckon it wasn't an accident that our visits to Sundance coincide. He's keeping a date with Bran Bolton, providing he's healthy enough after keeping his date with me. No. You see, I'm keeping a date with Bran Bolton, too. Are you inferring you didn't get a letter from me suggesting that you pack the marshal's badge of our county? Oh, not at all, Jed. But I would have said no with thanks if Bolton hadn't have made me the same proposition. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Nobody knew about me inviting you here except the Citizens Committee, of which, for good reason, Brand Bolton ain't a member. Well, that's funny. He came around hankering to know if I'd had word from you when I assured him I hadn't. Well, he just sort of loosened up. Bolton ain't got no say-so about the hiring of the marshal. Well, after I went to Butte and found your letter, I got to wondering about that. Pretty soon I got so curious I made a date with Bolton. I wonder how the mesquite kid ties in. He came here asking for Bolton. Oh, I see. He's been hired to rub you out. That's why I forced him in a shooting date, to make him face my gun now, so I wouldn't get shot in the back later. That makes sense, son. Bolton isn't expecting me until day after tomorrow, but I failed him, and he's due here today. Well, it's beginning to add up. Well, yeah, it looks like I'll be wearing the old blue coat again. Well, what's the coat got to do with it? Whenever I'm to face bullets, I always put it on. Feeling I'd die more comfortable with it wrapped around me. There's another old galoot in this town who's just about of the same notion. Though the coat he favors is gray. <laughs> it took men of your breed, Jed, to build and mold this good old West. That's right. And it's going to take the sons of the blue and the gray to hold it. <clears throat>
Rex sort of ran away with me alibi. That stage kind of scared him. That's another kind of an alibi. Well, Dusty King hadn't had your and be galvanized that stage yet. If he wasn't just plain tired, I reckon there must have been a gal in it. Oh, now you wrong me, alibi. And me with a sick heart because that school teacher turned tickle on me down there in Deadwood. Meadows, I presume. Why, yes, but who are you, Dr. Livingston? <laughs> well, not exactly, but I sure hope I'm what the good doctor ordered, Miss Meadows. Well, unfortunately, I've never felt better in my life. The uh, hotel isn't receiving any guests at the moment, but I'll be back for you and your baggage in about ten minutes, I hope. Mister, I offer you the hand, the honest hand of Noah Smith. Spell me I know, up. with a lie. Uh, uh, yes, thanks for reminding me. And, sir, I lend you my best wishes. Well, thanks for the loan. He's keeping that shooting date. I'll have the usual. Sidekick just kept a shooting date with the Mesquite Kid. No, it was on the level.
the hotel's receiving guests again, ma'am. Then, the mayor and the citizens committee know that I invited a friend of mine named Corrigan to pack the marshal's badge of our town. And I reckon you've just seen a sample of his qualifications. <laughs> That's what I saw. He certainly deserves the job. Yeah. And if Mr. Dusty King, Mr. Alibi Terhune, take care of it. I reckon I won't be needing any help. In the meantime, you take care of my partners there so they won't get into trouble. All right. Ma'am, you come along with me where you won't be molested by people that you haven't even met. Well, just a minute there, Corgan. I swore I'd get hung by a citizen committee. Unless I swore you in as marshal right now. Yeah, and I think he's right. Very good. Right there. Congratulations, Craig. That's mighty, mighty fine, and you sure deserve it. And while you're thanking the folks at Sundance properly, why, I'll just show Miss Meadows to her room so she won't be further annoyed, you know. <laughs> Meadows? Romance seems to come to Sundance, too, Marshal. <laughs> What's the matter? Is the heat too much for you? Yeah, sort of. See, fellas, am I late? Nope. In fact, you came a little too soon. We were just leaving. Oh, yeah? You stay away from town and me... I mean, Miss Meadows. Oh, so that's why you got alibi and me out here in this blistering heat. After me doing what I did to be kind to the lady. Huh. Kind my eye. You know, you took unfair advantage now, of me. And if you think that I'm going to sweat out here on this Bozeman Trail while you settle your gal troubles, you're just plain loco. Now, what are we here for? All right, Alibi. Don't get excited. The sheriff's worried about a wagon without any markings on it doing Sundance this forenoon. No marking? No. Well, that suggests plenty of undercover work. Yeah. What's it bringing? Two riders in the strong box. The trail is taking the secret. But I know it's doing the valley beyond that ridge. Oh, well, if so, what's holding us up? I wonder what would happen if the secret wasn't kept. Christ, you've got a mighty suspicious nature. I reckon you boys better track that Bozeman trail until I meet you later for further orders. Where will you be? I'll scout the upper trail while the sheriff takes care of the valley. All right, Christ. Well, beyond that ridge. 
Come on, man. But Christ told us to wait for orders. Orders? This is one time I'm using my better judgment. That explosion spelled trouble, and we're riding. Come on, Texas. We heard took care of the wagon we were expecting. Well, that crash is harsh. Pick him up, Harry. Howdy, Brad. I heard you just got back to town last night. You're still celebrating the goings on. I heard about it. And I'm willing to pay the bill. Well, I was just suggesting we drink a toast to the new marshal. Well, that suits me right down to the ground. Seeing as he treated me so friendly up in Butte Way. No. Well, I bet you were just dying to greet him. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. And the same to you, ma'am. My name is Bolton, Brand Bolton. If I'd have known you were going to be here so soon, nothing would have kept me in Butte. The best in the house is yours. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. I reckon the range busters contrived to welcome for the young lady that you couldn't match, Brand. I heard about that. We're aiming to drink to the boys. I know they'd be pleased if they knew you joined us. I appreciate your sentiments, gentlemen. I'll remember them when I drink my coffee. If you'll excuse me now, I'm going to my breakfast. The marshal must have had his before sunup. He's been riding since then, Mom, on some chore for the sheriff. And we're all hoping that he's born luckier than his predecessor. I sincerely hope so. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Good day. Nanny poison, boys. What's milk? No, my, my hand. I told you not to show you a scar face in Sundance. Well, that ain't friendly, Brand. Nobody's friendly to me anymore. No? Well, if anybody saw you come here, you'll wish that the knife that put that scar on your face had stopped your ticker. 
Ah, uh, nobody saw me, Bram. I come from the rocks behind Boot Hill, and I passed a hill full of dead marshals, too, I did. Listen, Maverick, you boys take orders from me. I take them, too. But if the gentle gives me my orders, so you or knew that you left the rocks, there'd be an extra big hole in Boot Hill Cemetery, and I'd get it. I suppose in the fella that's wearing the new marshal's badge keeps that hole that's awaiting for him empty. Are they not? How do you know that the new marshal? Didn't the boys go on a chore this morning, Bren? A chore that I ain't shared him. Ah, uh, that ain't friendly, Bren. That's how come I heard about the new marshal. Have an eye opener. Gold dust, 50 ounces even. That's the price I'm putting on the new marshal's badge. Uh, it might take a gent resembling you to collect it. Uh, you mean it took a gent like me to collect it? Wait a minute. Before you get the dust, I gotta know how you got the badge. I give you the dust, you've got to promise to move out of the state and stay out. Oh, you can depend on the maverick, Brand. Remember, if you're seen in here after high noon, you're liable to trade that dust for some hot lead. Oh, Brand, that ain't friendly. It ain't. Who do you suppose that is? Why, ask me. I'm as much of a stranger here about as you are. You might pay to trail him, though. Not till we find Crash. He was dead. Do you know me then? I saw you riding out of Sundance with the sheriff. Then, then I found your, your badge. I thought you was dead. Just why do you think I'm not? Maybe you saw me blowing all to pieces. 
when a wagon exploded. No! 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 You're dead! Stand back! Hold everything! Uh, ghost! Hang on, ghost! So it's you trying to break in my lockup. Got another galoot for your jail, Sheriff. Well, bring him in. We got plenty of room. I thought you was dead. <laughs> well, you can see for yourself, Sheriff. Them reports are greatly exaggerated. But this looks like the mine payroll that was coming in on that wagon. It is. Besides you boys, only the mayor, the express agent, and myself knew how and when this was coming. When I'm sure that none of us did any squealing. Well, there's the last statement, Brand. Well, that's all right. I'll keep that. Wait a minute. Now, Miss Meadows, having had a previous engagement, I was unable to see that you wouldn't be lonesome for supper. I'd admire offering my company for the rest of the evening being I'm free. Thank you, Mr. Bolton, but I wasn't lonesome. And I enjoy my evening walk alone. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I have something I'd like to show you in my office. Won't you sit down? No, thank you. Uh, seeing as you were right friendly with the new marshal, rest his soul, I thought maybe you'd like to own his badge. It would make a Jim Dandy souvenir for you to remember him by. I appreciate your giving me this, Mr. Bolton. But I'd hardly call it a Jim Dandy souvenir. Where did you get it? Well, like everyone else in town, I took a ride along Custer Canyon and found it near the rim in the dirt. Good night. My coat got caught on a wagon stage just as I jumped, and I rolled over and over and lit a plunk in a bog. Kid, I'm sure glad you found my horse. The whole town's more than you is dead. Uh -uh. Not even your star left to plant on Boot Hill. Well, as long as they think I'm dead, I reckon I'll stay that way. Makes our job a little easier. Come in. Take a chair. It may interest your ghost to know that I'm taking good care of Miss Meadows while you're a molder near in your grave. Ain't you forgetting about being forgotten by the gal he can't forget? We're a long way from Deadwood. Mr. Tolliver, Mr. Bolton gave me this as a souvenir. This is the badge that the marshal wore. Yes, I know. 
Mr. Bolton said he found it while he was riding along Costa Canyon. It occurred to me that he should have given it to you. I just thought you might like to know. And you thought right, ma'am. You were very close to the marshal, weren't you? Well, a little too close for comfort, ma'am. Sometimes. Well, I can't understand your saying that. He seems like a very nice fellow. Well, it seemed as right, ma'am. But he was the sort that kind of grew on you. Only like moss. No. Yes. What was wrong with him? Well, he, he seemed to always be having delusions. You know, one day he'd be Daniel Boone a chasing dogs and alley cats. And the next day he'd be Casanova a chasing women. No. Yeah. I suppose he's better off, poor soul. Yes, I think it's better for all concerned. Mr. Tolliver, I'm very fond of riding. Could you arrange for a horse for me tomorrow? Why, sure. Why, ma'am, I'm just about the ridingest hombre you ever did see. And I know that there was a horse just born for you. <laughs> well, I'd like to try him. Uh, for the time being, ma'am, uh, I wish you'd forget all about this badge. I won't say a word to another soul, Mr. Tolliver. Good night. Good night. Good night. You heard what she said? Yep. I also heard a false friend two-tonguing me. The fellow who had the payroll said he found my badge. That's how come he thought I was dead. Then Bolton lied to her. But the badge links Bolton and the thief. Tell me, what did the fellow who had the payroll look like? Well, he was big and overgrown, and he had a big scar on the side of his face and acted like he wasn't all there. Why, well, I know. It was that half loco Maverick. If the two express riders who disappeared turn up dead, this badge will help hang Bram Bolton. Well, I figure they were in cahoots. I'm going to have to make a trip to Butte to find out. I'm going to bed down one of your cells tonight. That coffee made me kind of sleepy. Good night, pal. <laughs> Come on, Son, I'm going to depend on you to keep Bram Bolton in sight. Oh, but you heard me promise to go riding with May Meadows, Sheriff. It's all right. I'll see that Miss Meadows has a good horse, son. And, son, I'll see that she gets to ride it. time since you came to my office, Chief. Yeah. And this may prove to be the last one. Bolton, you bungled everything that you framed up in Butte. I admit I shouldn't have cracked a car again about him packing the star in Sundance, but everything's going to be all right, Chief. Yes, the, when the boys took care of the wagon, they also took good care of Cargan. They forgot to take care of the strong box. And there was only a dried puddle of blood where the guard stood. And the loot is gone from the rocks. Then we've been double-crossed. <laughs> Don't say so. Spread the word. I want everybody at the hideout, not later than this time tomorrow. The Maverick won't be in that lineup, Chief. I've already ordered him to leave the state. <laughs> I heard even how that half-wit outsmarted you. He won't get the second chance. Have him trailed. And that badge he used to cold at you with is poison now. Take my advice and don't let it get out of your sight. I'm curious to know who's going to teach who about riding. Son, ain't you ashamed of such low insinuation? No, I wasn't insinuating. Well, I thought you was. And you thought you wasn't. So, son, 
It must have been a mutual mistake. I hope it rained. Well, it's a nice morning we're having. I'm glad somebody thinks so. that can't be mended, ma'am. After you and me do a little trading. What kind of trading? Well, I'm just hankering for a certain badge, ma'am. What badge? Oh, come now, ma'am. I'm just nasty little sentimental, and I'd admire having a certain marshal's badge that Bran Bolton gave you. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't know what became of it. Well, in that case, ma'am, you'll just naturally have to put up with my company until your memory improves. Again. Yeah, darn if it isn't. <laughs> you know, if you're tailing me, what's on your mind outside that hat? Well, there's nothing on my mind but a brand new song I'm trying to write. Say, how are you on poetry? Well, that's not one of my many talents, but uh, I'm glad I was wrong about you tailing me. <laughs> oh, forget it. <laughs> See, here's something that'll hand you a laugh. <laughs> I thought you were tailing me. <laughs> me? <laughs> no! <laughs> Tailing, mister. You lied about him not telling me. I was just evading the truth. Now get on your horse. Mr. King, I believe it's against the principles of a range buster to shoot a gent in the back, so I'm riding to town alone. Why, you get off that horse. Not me. Well, there's nothing to stop me from dragging you off. I'll kick. You'll be needing what's in that pack if the lady in there takes too long in refreshing her memory. like you would shoot a man in the back. Now, mister, I'm offering you a reach. Not me. You ain't gonna get me to any gunfight. Then I'll take you in with my bare hands.
Well, mister, drop that gun. All right, you asked for it. Now get going. And don't take any more chances on my principles. Because dead or alive, mister, I'm taking you in. Trouble with him is, Elmer, he drinks too much. Now, who are you talking to? Elmer. Who? Elmer. <clears throat> yes, sir, and that's bad for his shooting eye. Ah, uh, how can he talk? He's nothing but a wooden doll. Maybe yes, maybe no, but anyhow, he spoke words of wisdom. I guess I was wasting your breath on him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey. Well, it takes more than a bottle or two of booze to interfere with my shooting eye. That gunfighter we met in Deadwood had the same notion, but when his bluff was called, I was right. And who just called that gunfighter's bluff? I did. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And just how did you call his bluff? I said that his gun didn't hold a slug could make my head spin around. And just how could a slug from a gun do that? By clipping me on the chin. Well, right. Stick out your jaw. Alibi, you go there and sit down on that bench and get out of the way. Okay, Elmer. Okay, Lunkhead, I'm ready. Shoot. You missed. I was right. Booze and good shooting don't mix. All right, Runt. If you're game for another shot, I'm just going to show you that you're wrong. Okay, William Tell. I'm game. Oh, that's close. I said on the chin. <laughs> Alibi, his gun's empty. Yeah. For once, the rug is right. That's all I wanted to know. Come on, Miss Meadows, we're traveling. You've got company to see you, Brand. Do I know him, Jed? Well, yes. Then again, no. I thought you was dead. I'm the livest ghost that you ever did see. They're paying off at the mine this morning, Brian. I don't know what you're talking about, Jed. The glute that double-crossed you boys was the same that gave you this. Yep, that's my badge, all right. But uh, I tell you, gents, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Would you come in, please? The Maverick. I always said that double crosses should be hanged. And so should you. But there's a chance for you to save your neck by coming clean. What? What do you want me to do? I tell you, the place ain't healthy anymore. Why, well, I was ganged up on and had to empty my six-shooter during the fight. And I'm itching to know what this is all about, too. But here we stay until Bran tells us different. Hawkins, you won't have long to wait. Well, what happened to you? I was in an accident. Since you've been taking orders from me. Well, now I'm presenting the chief who tells me what to tell you. Mr. Mayor. Well, no, I... What? There's been a double cross. And nobody is safe here until I find out who the double crosser is. He won't show up here. I found out who he was, and the sheriff's probably got him. They're paying off at the mine right now. The Maverick hijacked the strongbox. Why didn't you tell me this in Sundance? Because we told him not to. I... I, I thought, thought you was dead. We had a hunch it'd be you. Thanks, Brand. And now you ought to know that it wasn't the Maverick that did the squealing. He fell over a cliff and was killed before he could say more than... I thought you was dead. It was the marshal's badge that Bran gave to May Meadows that did the squealing, Noah. Come in. 
come in, Miss Meadows. Be smart, boys. Don't draw. Dusty, get the hardware. Having satisfied my curiosity, I reckon we'd better be going, huh, boys? You mean you boys are leaving Sundance? Well, just as soon as we get these hombres back in town and behind prison bars. And I uh, reckon I won't be needing this badge anymore. <gasps> Aren't you two forgetting that this badge was given to me as a souvenir? Well, I was just polishing it up for you, ma'am, to remember me by. It will remind me, if you please, of the three of you. <laughs> Wasn't that a great show? Wasn't it a great film? Wasn't it enjoyable entertainment? Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll check back with us often and see what we've recently uploaded because we have thousands of Western films in our archive, some very, very rare films, and we plan on sharing them with you here on Westerns on the Web. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great-tastic day, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail.